Hello everyone. Today's case is one that definitely dropped my jaw when it popped up on my TikToks for you page. And it's definitely something that we all need to talk about. This is definitely also a case that really pissed me off. And that's because of this man, polygamist Tom Green, also known as the polygamist pedophile, who had up to 10 wives. And I say wives because many of his wives were actually minors children at the time that he married them. And they would go on to bear about 32 of his children. It's honestly just extremely disturbing and wild. And I'm honestly shocked he got away with it for as long as he did. And that honestly, nothing was really done about it, it seemed. Now I'm gonna have a little documentary linked down below that I ended up watching. I definitely recommend you going and watching it as well. It's extremely eye-opening. It's very jaw-dropping. So just be prepared. Just seeing the wives talk about their own experience in such a positive light and seeing all the children running around when you really realize the context of it all, it's just, it's very disturbing. But I definitely think it's worth the watch. It's a very good documentary. But let's dive into this one. Thomas Arthur Green was born on June 9th of 1948. He was mainly raised in Holiday, Utah, an area just southeast of Salt Lake City, and his family lived in a home that belonged to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, aka the LDS Church. And it was also the religion that his family practiced. From June of 1967 to 1969, Tom would go on to serve as a Mormon missionary in Indiana and Michigan. Now here's the thing with this case. The LDS church actually abandoned polygamy in 1890. However, there are still people that practice polygamy till this day. And I will say right now, practice, I guess, whatever you want, believe whatever you want, as long as you're all consenting adults. Adults being the main word here. When you involve children in it, it is a big no-no for me. Now, Tom would end up befriending a polygamous religious leader named Ross Wesley LeBaron, who he grew so close to, he would consider him an adoptive father of sorts. Now, keep in mind, Ross would end up being tried when he was 79 years old for the essay of minors who were related to him because he believed, and I quote, in the pure seed blood doctrine and that incest is a step up from polygamy and is ordered and directed by God, end quote. What a role model a man that believes in incest of underage children. Just an absolute perfect role model for Tom. Now I couldn't find any information on when Tom actually married his first legal wife. I don't know much about her. All I know is that her name was Linda Penman. And from what I did see, they married somewhere around 1970. Tom and Linda would go on to have three children together. He would be part of a dry cleaning business. However, when the 1980s rolled around and Tom was now in his thirties, he began to convert to the FLDS religion which is the fundamentalist offshoot of the LDS, you know, Mormon religion that so many practice in Utah and the surrounding states. Now, as far as I seen, when Tom began to convert to the FLDS religion, this is when he began to court children. And it seems that his wife, Linda, wanted nothing to do with that. So she ended up filing for divorce and taking their three children as far as I seen. So honestly, Hats off to her for standing her ground and realizing that that is extremely inappropriate and that there is something mentally wrong with Tom for him to be interesting in courting children. Because in 1984, Tom would meet his first child wife, a 13 year old girl named Linda Coons. Keep in mind at this point in time, Tom was around 35 years old and Tom was actually given permission by Linda's parents to marry her, which just in my opinion shows how deep things run in this community. Linda saying, and I quote, I had my parents' permission because I thought Tom was a very good man and they could see his heart, that he was not just out to take advantage of a young girl, end quote. It makes me sick to think that any parents would allow their 13 or 14 year old daughter to marry a 30 year old man and think that he had no ill intentions. Again, that is how deep these issues run in this community. And I really think looking at photos of Linda at that period of time made you realize how young she really was. She was still a baby. And in reality, she was given away to this man to SA her and impregnate her. Linda would be only 14 years old when she had their first child, Melvin. But the problem is that these groups, as I said, are just so brainwashed into thinking that this is normal and that this is okay, that they see no issue with the situation. And I think that's how this went on for so long. But seeing this as an outsider, seeing these photos of a grown man with a child, it's just absolutely 
disgusting and it's jaw dropping. Now the story of how Tom met all of his other wives is a little more confusing, but I did do my best to try to piece it all together. So let me know if there are any details that I missed or that I mixed up. Shirley Beagley would become Tom Green's second wife when she was only 15 years old. And it actually started when she spent about a month working at Tom and Linda's house. I'm assuming she was probably helping, you know, Linda with the baby and helping housekeep and stuff like that. And she said that she actually grew really close to Linda. And that's probably because they were around the same age. And that also means that another minor was allowed to be in this man's home alone. He also began grooming her. So how was Tom getting more underage girls to come to his home? Well, here's where we have June Beagley, Shirley's own mother. According to June, Tom had actually been married to June's older sister. And at the time, June was living in Southern Utah and her sister actually brought him down to meet her. And according to June, and I quote, things just went from there, end quote. And at some point or another, Tom would end up married to June, who had also been in a polygamous relationship before that. It all is tied together. And here's where things get even crazier. Tom's next child bride would be his 14 year old stepdaughter, who get this, was Shirley's younger sister and June's youngest daughter. So not only was Tom married to someone his own age, but he was also married to her two daughters. And she allowed all of this to happen. She allowed a pedophile, to marry both of her daughters who were 14 and 15 years old at the time. So not only was he married to the aunt, he's now married to the mother and the daughters. And he also has a 13 to 14 year old that he previously married. Like, what is this? Leanne said, and I quote, I didn't see him as a father figure for very long. I think I fell in love with him right away, end quote. Those are the words of a 14 year old girl. Keep that in mind. After this came 15 year old Carrie Bjorkman. From the time that Tom first kissed her to the time that they were spiritually married was two days. And on the way home from the reception, which keep in mind both Tom's family and Carrie's family attended. Carrie told her younger sister, Hannah, who was 14 at the time, that she also wanted her to marry Tom. So on the way home from the reception, Hannah sat in the back seat with Tom. And keep in mind, these children have been brainwashed. Everyone that is in these groups, in my opinion, has been brainwashed into thinking that this is okay. So Hannah sat in the back seat with a nearly 40 year old man at this point in time, and she's 14. And she's telling him that she wants her children to have his eyes. And he would reply to her saying, and I quote, I know a way that we can make that happen, end quote. De Disgusting. On Carrie and Tom's wedding night, they ended up consummating their marriage or what I would like to call he essayed her. And to really paint a picture of how naive the girls are in these groups and just how young that Carrie really was, that night when they consummated their marriage, Tom ended up drawing on Carrie's stomach and explained to her how her reproductive organs worked and how babies were made. And she would relay this in the documentary as a positive. So now two to three weeks after Tom ended up marrying Carrie, he would also marry her younger sister, Hannah. And as I said, it's just very disturbing and heartbreaking hearing these young girls talk in this documentary about how they fell in love with Tom, knowing that they were just children at that time. And he was a nearly 40 year old man. It's just, it's just heartbreaking because they didn't realize what was truly happening to them. And honestly, they don't deserve any hate for anything that they went through. If anything, it was the adults in their lives and Tom. It's just a complete cycle of abuse that happens over and over and over again, it seems. And it's made up to be normal. Now, when Tom would end up being asked why he liked to marry underage girls, he would say, and I quote, I have married the wives that I have because those are the wives that God brought to me. A lot of people have criticized me soundly for marrying young girls, and I agree. There's hardly any girls at that age that are really ready for marriage, but these girls were. These girls have demonstrated that they really weren't too young, end quote. No, it's definitely not because, you know, you were a pedophile, Tom, that loved to groom underage girls, brainwash, and isolate them. It's definitely because some God out there that you believe in was bringing these young girls to you because they were ready to be your wives. It's just... It's disgusting. Again, believe whatever you want, but when it involves children, it crosses a line for me. By 1995, Tom and his family had ended up moving to Sandy, Utah, an area close to where he grew up. Around this time, the group was also evicted from a trailer park that they were living in there, and Tom would end up purchasing a 15-acre property in Utah's West Desert for around $30,000. He would end up creating a convoy of mobile homes on his land and call it Greenhaven. Now, when Tom did this, Essentially, he was isolating his victims from the rest of the world and keeping them there on this property in the middle of the desert in isolation. It was very desolate there. And he was essentially just allowed to bring all of his child wives there. According to him, the wives decided when they would be with him 
if you want to call it that. So he claims it was never about sex, but I beg to differ. As I keep saying, this was definitely a cycle of abuse that was just allowed to happen over and over and over again. So no one's seen anything wrong with the situation happening that was involved that knew what was going on. Because in their minds, they knew nothing different. They didn't know any different. And Jerry Springer would actually eventually go on to say a quote that I think is very eye-opening and it makes a lot of sense. And he said, and I quote, if I take a 14 year old kid, I can convince that kid of anything and say, hey, you know what? If you get to see me once every two months, that's happiness. And if that's all the kid knows, the kid will believe that's happiness, end quote. And that is exactly what a predator like Tom did in the name of religion. And that's why it was allowed to go on for so long and why it still goes on to this day in some areas. Because the people that are involved in it don't know any different. In their mind, this is normal. And when you see it as an outsider, it is appalling and it is jaw dropping and it is sickening to think that this is happening to these children and no one stops it. They allow it. The parents bring their children to these pedophiles and just tell them to do whatever they want to them. So Tom and this family of his that he created moved to the middle of the desert. And from there to make money, they would run a telemarketing business and they'd also go door to door in Salt Lake City and sell magazines. Once a week, they would drive the eight hours from their home to Salt Lake City. And a lot of the times he would bring two of the wives, usually Hannah or Leanne, because they were the younger ones. And they'd often bring a couple of the children as well. And Tom would then essentially use the younger wives and the children to go and do the door-to-door -door knocks so that, you know, people would feel bad for them. If a young mother is showing up at her door with a small child, you're gonna feel more inclined to buy something from them than, you know, an old 40-year-old man. The wives and the small children would get more sympathy and essentially make more money for the group then. But honestly, it didn't seem like they had a lot of money. It seemed like they were living in mere poverty at this point in the middle of the desert. At this time, the first wife, Linda, would say that she was essentially the CEO of the group. She was the head wife. And I think by 1995, 1996 time range, all the wives were of age legally by now. They were all at least 18 years old. So they were all getting their own allotted times to go see Tom. You know, every wife had their own day so that no one would get jealous. Linda really was the head wife. It seemed like everyone loved her. She's the one that would make sure everything ran smoothly on the compound. But life in Greenhaven wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. As I said, they were essentially living in poverty there and they were mainly making money off the women claiming to be single mothers and getting government assistance. And from what I've seen, they were only making about $30,000 from the government to feed, clothe, and house all of the wives Tom and all of their children. And they had, I think about 20 children at that point. The land that they lived on as well, was just very desolate. It was just all literally desert. A lot of the trailers that they were living in looked to be falling apart. There was a lot of rusty metal just laying around everywhere. And the children were always running around barefoot. It just did not seem like a great place, honestly, to live. But all of the wives had big smiles on their face all the time. The children ran around happy. And I mean, Tom was living his best life. He could have anything he ever wanted because he could get away with anything. Now I did, you know, I did see some positives in some of the articles that detailed of, you know, reporters that would go there and interview the family and see what was going on. And they did say that some of the children were in Boy Scouts, that some of the kids would go to the local school, but I also seen that the mothers homeschooled the children. So I don't know too much about that. There wasn't a TV there, but I did see that they go to the movies quite often. Although I don't know how they would afford to go to the movies, especially with that many children, but they would show the children animated biblical stories and they'd often play music around the encampment, such as the Beatles, early rock and roll and Celtic music. So it seems like they were isolated, but they weren't like totally isolated in all ways. It wasn't like the Amish where they don't let any outside stuff come in. I think I seen that Hannah actually ran the Las Vegas marathon when she was two months pregnant. Carrie actually did a lot of construction work. Leanne was trying to become a clothing model for catalogs. And as I said, Tom thought he could get away with anything. His ego was through the roof at this point. And here's where things get wild because in the late nineties to early two thousands, Tom and his wives would end up going on multiple different reality television shows where they would argue that their lifestyle was a constitutional right. Yeah, because being able to essay children should be a constitutional right. Again, if you're all consenting adults, go crazy, have 20 wives, I could care less. But when you involve children in it, that's where the issue lies. And I think everyone could pretty much agree with that. If you're a consenting adult, go crazy, but leave the children out of it. But they don't want to because they want the children. Children are so much easier to manipulate. And in my opinion, this man should have been locked up for the rest of his life. And it's insane to me that he was allowed to be on so many shows for so long, speaking like this out in public. 
and he wasn't taken down sooner. He was allowed to continue to re-victimize his victims over and over again. The sad part is they didn't even realize what was really happening to them. Tom and his wives would end up going on TV shows such as Jerry Springer, Dateline NBC, and even Judge Judy, which those clips have been floating around the internet more recently again. And the fact that Tom was appalled when Judge Judy called his wives children it really says something to me that he so openly would go on to these shows and admit that he was in his thirties when he started grooming 13 to 15 year olds and impregnating them. And that this was on live television and it took so long for him to be stopped. That a pedophile could outrightly go on a show with his victims and admit to what he's doing and no one stopped him. In 1996, Tom would appear on Jerry Springer with a new 14 year old girl that he was courting and he was claiming to be engaged to 14 years old. And Tom was 47 at this point. And this was the episode where Jerry Springer made that quote that I told you about earlier, which I could not have said better myself. But he was openly on television with a new child that he was saying he was going to marry. It's... It's just mind blowing. In 1999, the documentary, One Man, Six Wives, 29 Children would be filmed on the family's compound, which is where I got a lot of the information for this and the footage for this video. It's also the documentary that I mentioned at the very beginning that is just very jaw dropping. By this point in time, Tom was still living there with Linda, Carrie, Hannah, Shirley, Leanne, and their mother, June, who, I seen was divorced from him. They weren't together anymore, but she was still on the compound it seemed. And there was also over 20 children living on this compound as well. The wives would also seem to like to have children at the same time and have these groups of children that were around the same age. And they call them teams. And there was teams all the way from team A to team E of rounds of children that they'd had together. By now, Linda was 28 years old and she had six children, Melvin, Johnny, Lauren, Philip, Rebecca, and Rosanna. Shirley had seven children, Chris, Hiram, Sierra, Gerald, Alonzo, and twins Elizabeth and Melanie. Leanne had four children, Kelly, Misty, Emerald, and Hunter, all named after colors. Carrie had three children, Bonnie, Wesley, and Benjamin Franklin. And 22-year-old Hannah had two children at this time, Sharon and Brigham Young. Another really eerie fact I learned was that Shirley actually gave birth to her fourth son, Gerald, on the exact same day that her mother gave birth to Tom's child. So mother and daughter gave birth to the same man's baby on the exact same day, and they also did it in the same bed. This also meant that their children were brothers to each other, they were uncles to each other, and June's baby was Shirley's brother, and Shirley's baby was June's grandson, so it was a granddaddy, daddy, baby, brother, sister fucking mess. So that happened as well there. It's also noted that June's son, Sam, was born with autism and little Gerald would end up dying in a fire when he was three years old. I also seen that June and Tom had a daughter named Mindy, but it wasn't detailed in the list of children's names. So I don't know how many more children those two had together, but she was also, I think around 35 or so. She was around his same age when they got together and they were, you know, spiritually married. So I don't know how many more years she was able to have children for him. So I only know of at least two children that they had together, but they might've had more. So although Tom claimed to be engaged on the Jerry Springer show in 1996, that didn't end up working out. And in 1999, Tom was considering taking a wife once again, this time a 16 year old girl named Candace McKinley, who was actually the daughter of one of Tom's adopted sons. Tom said that he had actually known Candace since she was little, since she was a child, an even younger child, but that it wasn't until she turned 16 that she, and I quote, showed interest in him and began flirting with him, end quote. And I'm saying that in quotes because I do not think a 40 year old man bragging about or saying that a child was flirting with him was actual flirting. And I don't think there's any ounce of appropriateness in that. For Tom blaming a child, for why he should eventually essay her. And Tom would also go on to say that he believed that Candace seemed very mature and capable. Again, she was 16 years old. To make things even more disturbing, Linda and Tom's oldest son, Melvin, was around 12 years old at the time. And he told the camera crew that was there filming them all that he was dating Candace, which also is a very inappropriate relationship, a 12 year old with a 16 year old. But that also meant that Tom was trying to get with and marry his son's girlfriend. Friend. Just the levels of disturbing and disgusting and wrong just keep layering themselves up. However, in the end, it was a good thing that Tom was going public with all of this because in his delusional mind, he thought that everything he was doing was okay. And so he did go public with it all because he didn't see any reason not to because he didn't believe anything he was doing was wrong. He thought 
everything was fine. He did not believe that he was a pedophile. He did not believe that marrying 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 year olds was wrong as a 30 to 40 year old man. And because he went so public with it all, he eventually ended up catching the attention of a man named David Olevitz, a Utah County prosecutor and the brother of the state governor. And let me tell you, David was also equally as disgusted as I'm sure we all are collectively right now. So in a very rare use of the state's law at the time, David ended up charging Tom with bigamy, which is, and I quote, the act of going through a marriage ceremony while already married to another person, end quote, which is essentially in a roundabout way, charging him for being a polygamist. And in court documents, David, who was also a practicing Mormon, said that Tom was able to elude prosecution by marrying without state sanction, saying, and I quote, Green has intentionally made very complex his legal relationships with his wives. Green's schemes is a very public challenge to our marriage laws. He's a master of taking a portion of the truth and twisting it. To me, any man who takes a 13 year old girl and impregnates her ought to be prosecuted, end quote. Could not have said it better myself. Could not have said it better. Now it would take until 2001 for Tom to be charged and found guilty of bigamy for four of his wives. So there was four counts of bigamy that he was charged with because he was technically married to Linda. His, her parents legally let her marry him when she was 13, 14 years old. So the fact that he got these other four young children, his wives, was why he got these four charges. He never got charged with bigamy or anything like that for Linda. Now, he'd also end up being found guilty of criminal non-support for getting thousands in state welfare payments to support his 32 children he would end up having. A wife that would end up going by LB in documents asked the court to order Tom to pay her child support. Now, it wouldn't be until 2002 that Tom would be convicted of the R word. And that would be for the essay of Linda. Now it seemed that a no contact order would be placed on her and her children. But meanwhile, Tom would preach this entire time that he was being prosecuted for his religious beliefs and for embarrassing the LDS church. Not because he was a pedophile that was essaying children. Honestly, just slam the door and throw the key away with this man. I don't know why they didn't. I just have no sympathy for him whatsoever. Now, here's the thing. I'm pretty sure that David put these charges on Tom without Linda wanting this to happen because it seemed that Linda loved Tom for her entire life. As far as I've seen, it was Linda and Shirley that really stuck by Tom the entire time. And I don't think she seen her situation for what it was because here's the thing. Tom would end up only spending six years in jail and he would only ever be charged for Linda because whatever the laws are in Utah at that point in time, if they're still like that today, the other girls being 14 and 15 and you know older than that, even though they were minors technically, and I think we would all agree that it's extremely inappropriate what happened and should have been illegal that he was doing this with 14 and 15 year olds as well. He was only charged because Linda was 13 when he first began courting her. So in 2007, Tom ended up being released and his conditions of release would detail that Tom had to complete counseling, mental health therapy sessions, and pay the state more than $34,000 in restitution. He also owed more than $130,000 in child support at this point in time. And thankfully, he also had to register as a sex offender. Now, here's the thing with that it finally seemed like there was some form of justice happening here. You know, he had to register. He had spent at least a little bit of time in jail. He owed all this money and, you know, his name was finally out there. People could see him for what he was. Until you find out that after he left jail, he was planning on moving back in with Linda, which is just how twisted all of this is that he groomed this child, this young little girl, 13 years old. He essayed her. He made her, you know, bear his children as a child herself. He's finally convicted of those things. And then he gets released and just goes right back to her. It's insane. And I understand Linda was an adult at this time. She can make her own choices. But and Linda outright said that she forgave Tom for his crimes and that she needed him home to help take care of their seven children. After Tom's release, Tom and his family never really went into the spotlight again. It seems that he kind of learned a lesson in a way of how to be a better predator, in my opinion. They ended up moving to a quadplex to avoid any more charges and any more of the spotlight and get in trouble again. And I'm honestly not really sure how it worked for him being a registered sex offender and then being allowed to be around his children again. I don't know if he's allowed to because they're his children, but either way, his children would have been, you know, nearing the age of when he was victimizing these girls. And it seems like in these groups, they don't have anything against certain things. And, you know, his mentor, 
was even, you know, into victimizing and essaying his own family members. As far as I've seen, Tom would end up having 34 children and a total of about 54 grandchildren. And honestly, I hope to the highest heavens that he did not victimize any of his children or his grandchildren. But in 2001, Tom would finally die at the age of 72 from pneumonia. And I honestly say good riddance. I good riddance to that man. And honestly, the fact that groups like this that prey on children are allowed to operate and they aren't taken down immediately is insane to me. I remember also watching uh, the Netflix documentary, um, what is it? Keep Sweet, Pray and Obey. It's literally this, this same situation with Tom Green. There are just so many groups like this. It's unbelievable. The fact that child brides are still a common thing in the United States of America. But when you really look at the full picture, you really do see the trickle down effect. You see the cycle of abuse of these children growing up, thinking this is normal, being wed off young as children, and then, you know, eventually wedding their children off young. And I honestly really do hope it ends with these children, with Tom's children, and that the cycle of abuse does not continue. And as far as I have seen, it does seem like it has stopped with them. I seen someone comment that Tom must have knocked the bottom out of hell after he died. And I could not have said it better. I really have, couldn't have not. Now, in more recent times as kind of an update from all of this, cause this did all happen in the eighties, nineties and early two thousands. From what I did see, a lot of the wives and the children are living great lives, that they are thriving, that they are flourishing, and that just makes me so happy to end this horrific video on a positive note of some sort. From what I've seen, Hannah ended up having six children. She also remarried a man around her age and looks to be living an amazing life. I also seen that I think she became a family nurse practitioner. So she has her job. She has these beautiful children, a beautiful family now. And she is just looks so happy. And I am very happy that she found that happiness. As far as I've seen, Leanne also married a man around her age. But before Tom did die, I did see that Shirley, Linda, and Carrie still seem to have a relationship with him and still seem to have been with him during that whole time. And they were honestly... They were just very devoted to him and to the entire situation. But they also seem, now that he has passed, to be thriving in life. And I really do hope them all the best. And I really do hope that this cycle ends. Now, when it comes to the children, it does, as I said, seem like the cycle of abuse has ended. Most of the children seem to be in monogamous relationships. And they all seem to be extremely happy and living great lives. So I honestly don't think there could have been a more positive note when it came to ending a situation like this. And I really hope a video like this can open up more people's eyes to what may still be happening in America with groups like these. Again, as I said, believe whatever you want, but when it involves children, that's where you cross the line with me. And these groups who take children and wed them off and manipulate them like they do at very young ages, it's just, it's sick and it's twisted and it's disgusting. And it really does need to end. And I just wish the best for all of the wives and all of the children in this, that after everything that happened to them. But what I do want to know is how you all feel about this case and about this story and about situations like this happening in a modern time still. Is there any information that I didn't include in this that you know about? Because although this was very public, there wasn't a lot of nitty gritty details. And those are the details that I get very interested in. But let's have a huge chat about this down below. And as always, if there are any cases you want me to cover, let me know down below as well. And I will look into them. I hope you all stay safe out there. Lock your windows and doors. And if you see something, say something. I will see you in the next video.